So today we're going to be doing some solar imaging with the Dwarf 3 telescope and uh, yeah, we're just going to put the safety filter on here. Extremely important because the sun is behind us. We're just waiting for some clouds to clear and we will be doing some solar imaging with the newest AI update, which has a bit of a difference. So we're just going to rotate the telescope so that it's more or less facing the sun and then we'll wait for the uh, sun to pop out of those clouds, which uh, yeah, it was clear when I brought it out and put it here on my uh, Gitzmo GT2530 uh, tripod. It's a really nice carbon fiber tripod. Overkill, but uh, I use it for other photography needs. So yeah, I just grabbed it. But I do have a nice little ball head mount rather than the, the big one. So let's get to imaging the sun. We found the sun and another cloud decided to go by. So I just had to wait for this to clear. But overall, the telescope tries to track the sun once you have it centered. And this is important to note because when it's cloudy like this, it can't track the sun. It literally is not moving at all. And it's waiting for the sun to come out. As you can see, it moved. And then it'll recenter the sun in the framing. So something to keep in mind that if you are imaging and you have clouds going by, they will eventually knock the sun off the frame if they take too long. But it does a good job of tracking the sun. And similarly, the moon at night when you are having it image in some cloudy conditions. Obviously, you don't want to image in cloudy conditions because you'd have an image that looks like this. But now that we have the sun in tracking mode, we can then go and do some autofocus and we'll run the autofocus here because originally when I tried to focus on it, clouds got in the way and it focused on the clouds rather than the sun. It takes about 30 seconds to do it and we can already see some sunspots, some filament and a lot of other detail on the sun's surface. So now we can get ready to actually start imaging. So it's going to take a few seconds to initialize and then what it's going to do is take a series of photos. The default is 20, which is what we're doing right now. So as you can see in the top of the screen where it's red, it's gone and taken 20 images and then it's starting to stack them. Now stacking does take longer to do and it'll slowly stack them and occasionally it won't stack all of them because cloud went through or maybe, it, you know, the seeing wasn't so great on that particular frame, but it will do the best it can to give you a nice image. And then here you go, capture complete and you have this absolutely wonderful picture of the sun you can then go and take a look at in the album so i did some additional tests with the dwarf 3 i changed some of the parameter settings basically i was trying to see filaments around the outside of the sun i'm sure there's a correct word for it which i will post right here and uh overall uh we'll have to look at the computer to see if we got anything and yeah it's getting brighter and darker as it's going between clouds so now that it's outside again i'm going to attempt to get an even brighter exposure to see if I can actually see any sort of detail around the corona of the sun. So let's give that a try. Okay, so the overexposing thing didn't quite work the way I was hoping to. I guess that either A, there were no flares up that day, or it's not really designed for flares, it's really designed for the surface features of the sun. But I was like, not to be dissuaded, I decided to go and do something crazy and set it to 999 images. And well, it then went and took 999 images, which didn't take that long, but oh man, it took a long time to stack them all. And you can see here that it's imaging and the sun is clear of the clouds and there's a huge blue white space there. So that's going to be good. And we're just looking at the back of the scope. I guess we could look at the side or whatnot. There we go. And uh, yeah. We're just uh, letting it go and uh, seeing how it's going to run at 999. Okay, so I ended up doing 20, 50, and 999 frames to get an idea of if there's really any improvement over just the standard default 20. And I actually ran into some interesting conclusions. Now, in this photo, there's on the left is 20, then in the middle is 50, and in the right hand side is 999. And when we look at them even closer, we can start to see some of the differences between the three different stacks. From first glance, the stack 20 looks pretty good. So I think a default of 20 is a decent number. But when we look at the 50 stack, we can definitely start seeing a little bit more detail, especially in the finer areas. However, when we look at the 999, it's definitely a lot smoother. There's less noise, but there's also, I would say, less detail except in the lighter parts of the sun, you can see a lot more of those like l faint filaments and stuff going along. Now, I would say this would be a scientific test, except for the fact that one, I only did this one for each sun because, you know, I had clouds and stuff going around. But also when I looked at the file folder structure, which has a lot of data in the folder names, 
I noticed something kind of peculiar. I found that the exposures had been slightly adjusted by the automatic settings, as well as the gain in one of them was went from 10 to zero. And at that point I was like, okay, this means that I'm gonna get slightly different looking images for each of these photos. So while I would say from this result that probably more stacking, probably in the range of let's say 100 to 150 is probably gonna get you a better result, clearly going all the way to 999, you kind of start blurring because there's a rotation field between the dwarf telescope and the sun, and that's probably doing a bit of a smear. Now, in theory, we should be able to fix this on the computer because at that point, it'll adjust the sun's position and rotation in comparison to the dwarf field of view. And also there's a lot of additional stacking technology that you can run on a computer and then you can do editing and try to like push and pull the sun photos to get better and better. But I want this video to be specifically about what comes out of the dwarf because I think 90% of people, this is probably as far as they're going to go. Now, if you actually are like, hey, I really want a solar imaging tutorial, let me know in the comments below and I will look at putting one together for you guys. And that's the end of the video. So two videos here you can uh, watch next. One of them is what YouTube thinks is best for you and the other one is probably my latest video. You decide which one you want to watch next.